In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But, but if, if we, we confess, confess our, our sins, sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive, forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. Most merciful God, 
we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who Who is is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, One God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament lesson is from the fifth book of Moses, Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter. These are Moses' parting words to the people of Israel. For the Lord will judge his people and have compassion on his servants when he sees that their power is gone and there is no one remaining, bond or free. He will say, where are their gods, the rock in which they sought refuge, who ate the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offering? Let them rise up and help you and be your refuge. Now see that I, even I, am he, and there is no God beside me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Nor is there any who can deliver from my hand. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go through them and I will praise the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous shall enter. I will praise you for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I pray, O Lord. O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord, and he has given us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, I will exalt you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. (laughs) You didn't want to wait for joy this time, did you? How about if you go up and stand up on on the top step here so people can see you, okay? All right, and I'll give you each a palm again. You did so well waving those palms. We're going to sing one more song, and you can wave them again as we sing it. We're going to sing, God is so good. Okay? 
You can stand up even. Yes. It was like this. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. I fell away. I fell away. I fell away. Fell away in sin. God sent his son. Sing it loud. God sent his son, God sent his son, God sent his son, sent his son for me. Died on the cross, died on the cross, died on the cross, died on the cross, on the cross for me. They didn't stay dead, he rose from the dead. Ready? Rose from the dead, rose from the dead, rose from the dead, from the dead for me. Now I have life, now I have life, now I have life, now I have life, life eternally. God is good, God is so good, God is so good. So good, he's so good to me. Thanks, girls. Awesome job. Yes, today's a very special day, Palm Sunday, and you're waving your palms. You're showing your praises to God that God is so good to you. He loves you. He did the best thing for you. He sent his son Jesus to die on the cross. He is the Lamb. And I brought something for you girls to look at and you can hold. It is a little lamb. And it has a cross in the middle. Because Jesus is the Lamb of God. He rode the donkey, the Lamb rode the donkey into Jerusalem to die on the cross. To save us. That's what Hosanna means. Hosanna, save us, save us. And that's exactly what Jesus did. We just read in that psalm, bind the sacrifice on the altar. Jesus was the sacrifice who was bound on the altar, the altar of the cross for us. Once and for all, he died that we might have life. And he rose again. That's the good news that, that the people sang, saying, blessed is he who comes. And so he comes and he died on the cross. So I give you each a cross also. A cross made out of palms to remind you of this special day. And he rose from the dead so that we too will rise again. We're going to celebrate that in a few more days too. First, we're going to hear about his death on Good Friday, but then next Sunday is Easter. And we wave our palms of celebration all the time. Go now with joy in your heart, praising the Lord. Hosanna to God in the highest. Our epistle reading is found in Philippians chapter 2, beginning with verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him, and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Glory, glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. The next day a great multitude that had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, and cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat on it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. 
But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done these things to him. Therefore, the people who were with him when he called Lazarus out of his tomb and raised him from the dead bore witness. For this reason, the people also met him because they heard that he had done this sign. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, You see that you are accomplishing nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, God, in God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, Christ, his only Son, our Lord, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered, suffered under Pontius, Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, died, died and was buried. Was he descended he into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our Lord and Savior, our humble, triumphant King, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this Palm Sunday is from our epistle reading, which we just heard from Philippians chapter 2. We'll read again verses 5 through 8. <clears throat> Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Here ends our text. He humbled himself. God humbled himself. He humbled himself for you. He humbled himself for Adrian. He humbled himself for all the world. He did that to save us from our sins to give his life as a sacrifice for all our sins. This is the good news that we hear today. He did save us, Hosanna, to God in the highest. 
let this mind be in you then, of the humble man, Jesus Christ. There's an organization in the LCMS called the Ongoing Ambassadors for Christ. OAFC, in short, it's an auxiliary organization that its purpose is to train youth to be witnesses of this good news of Jesus Christ crucified. And so they have trainings every summer, and then they have weekend events where they, when they put into and practice their training and go knock on doors and, and witness to people about who Christ is and what he has done for them. And they have this, this little saying called attitude check. Some of you may have already heard this. You're familiar with the ongoing ambassadors for Christ. And whenever someone yells out, attitude check, everyone else is supposed to stop what they're doing and say, praise the Lord. <laughs> Why would there be an attitude check? Well, because first of all, the devil doesn't want to, these youth to be doing what they're doing. He wants to put up roadblocks, wants to steer them the wrong way. And of course, we all have our sinful flesh born uh, in sin, the original sin that Adam gave to us. And I was kidding Adam about that this, this past week. We're born with Adam's sin, all of us. Little, little Adrian too. And that sin rears up in us and sometimes thinks about us more than what? Than of our God. Let this mind be in you, Jesus says. We need an attitude check often. Check our attitudes. And when something is off, something isn't right, that's what the, what's, what the youth yell out. Check your attitude. Is your mind following the mind of Christ or is it disrupting the group for your own selfish purposes? Attitude check. Praise the Lord. Yes, praise the Lord. For our Lord put himself last, putting us first, serving us first. How? He humbled himself and became a true man, born of the Virgin Mary. He who created the world became, like his creatures, a true man. Praise the Lord. He humbled himself by riding into Jerusalem on a donkey to his death. He was obedient to death. Praise the Lord. He has given you now this good news to share with the world. Praise the Lord. Yes, Paul begins this second chapter of Philippians of our, of our, uh, our text with an attitude check for all of us. Even before he talks about Christ's mind, he talks about our minds. Listen to Paul speak to your heart in the first four verses of our epistle. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if there is any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the, of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for your own interests, but also for the interests of others. Attitude check. Paul begins with saying, if, 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 if this is true, if this is so true, and the answer is yes, 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 yes. There is consolation in Christ. There is comfort in His love. There is mercy. There is fellowship with the Holy Spirit. So then, you who are part of this, have the mind of Christ. Crucify your, your selfish desires. Put on the mind of Christ. Attitude check. Yes, Paul calls on each of us not to check our luggage at the, ch at the church door, but our attitudes this, mo this morning. Is anything being done by selfish ambition in your life? Do you always have Christ's lowliness of mind and esteem others better than yourselves? Boy, that's a tough one. Do you look out for the interests of others or just your own? Ah, those are some big attitude checks that would keep you from being an effective witness of Jesus. Yes, God calls us to check that baggage and leave it at the cross, crucify it, drown it in our baptism. Count it as rubbish, as we heard Paul say last week in the next chapter in Philippians 3. Paul has nothing to boast of, no lineage, nothing. No self-righteousness as a Pharisee, nothing. 
but the excellency of knowing Jesus Christ and Him as Lord. Not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. Attitude check. Praise the Lord. Remember what God has done for you, His marvelous works. This is the day the Lord has made. His righteousness is given to me through faith, not my righteousness. No, there was that big exchange we heard in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. He who knew no sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God. Let's see the mind of Christ in each of us. But first, let's see how Christ accomplished this righteousness for us. For that is our motivation. That's our strength. How did Jesus give us his righteousness, his consolation, his comfort, his love, fellowship with the Holy Spirit? Well, first of all, Jesus became servant of all. That's how God humbled himself. He became servant of all. First, a bondservant, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and becoming in the likeness of men. Jesus is by nature true God. He is true God. That's his nature, second person of the Holy Trinity. He didn't stop being God when he was born of the Virgin Mary. Yet he made himself of no reputation by becoming a man. The master craftsman of the universe was born in a humble manger. Yes, he was still true God. And this is most important because he didn't always use all his power as true God that he even had in his possession as a little baby. But he humbled himself. He hid it from himself. He didn't use it always. And of course, he never used it for his own selfish purposes. He only used it for the good of others. He never used it to save himself. But he gave all glory to God. He didn't use it when people criticized him for healing on the Sabbath. He didn't use it when they said, no, nothing good can come out of Nazareth. He didn't shut them up and, and zap them with his power. No, he emptied himself. He humbled himself. He, with, with, he received the, the insults, the injuries from all people. He allowed sinful men to arrest him, falsely accuse him before the Sanhedrin, spit upon him without a retaliation. Listen to the prophecy from Isaiah, chapter 53 of the suffering servant, which we will hear again on Good Friday. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shears is silent. See, so he opened not his mouth. He endured all things silently for us, unjustly for us. How difficult it is to think of others first when they're treating you this way, isn't it? This was Jesus' attitude. Ours, well, we don't like to suffer injustices so much, do we? We're not very good at doing that. All too often we act like, well, Will Smith at the Oscars, right? <laughs> Maybe some of you here heard what happened at the Oscars. Chris Rock, the, the master of ceremonies, was, was doing what he normally does. He, he pokes fun at people and he took a little too far. He, he made fun of, Chris, of Will Smith's wife because she has alopecia, involves a loss of hair. He made a comment about her hairstyle, which wasn't in good taste at all. Well, Will Smith wasn't having any of it. He walked up on the stage and he slapped him pretty good, didn't he? And he would, didn't leave it at that. He walked back to his, his seat and he was yelling, to keep her, my wife's mouth out of your expletive, exit mouth. Yeah. Keep it out of your mouth. That's our first reaction when somebody insults us that we want to Get back right away. But that's not what Jesus did. Will needed an attitude check in the worst way, didn't he? But later, he calmed down. He apologized. Of course, he does still re receive the, 
the uh, consequences for his actions that he's banned from the Oscars now for 10 years. Well, God could have and should have banned us, not just for 10 years, for eternity, from heaven, for our selfish acts, for the things that we are, have done evilly. But he didn't. Instead, he put all the guilt on his son. He laid it all on Jesus. He made Jesus suffer for our consequences. Jesus was slapped in the face. Jesus was punched. He was whipped. He was spit upon. All those things to set us free from our sin, to give us his righteousness. That's how God humbled himself. Yes, God humbled himself as a servant to save you. Remember what happened on the way to Samaria? As they were going to Jerusalem? And the, and the, the Samaritans wouldn't receive the disciples who went ahead of him, who were, who were going to prepare the way for Jesus. Well, those disciples said, hey, let's do what Elijah said, did. Let's rain down fire upon them. Let's burn them up. <laughs> that was their attitude, wasn't it? You do wrong to us? Well, let's burn you guys up. Attitude check. What did Jesus say to his disciples? He said, You do not know what manner of spirit you are. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. How did God humble himself for you? By coming to save you. By becoming a servant for you. And second of all, he, came, he became a servant obedient unto death. Yes, death of the cross. That's what our text says. Could Jesus have come down from the cross? Well, we heard about that on Wednesday, didn't we? When all those taunts, those temptations were hurled by the, the common people to Jesus. If you really are the Son of God, show us. Come down. Save yourself. Jesus could have. He had the power, but he withheld that power. He was obedient to his Father's will, even to death for us. God humbled himself. Even the, the, the ones who were on the side of the cross next to him said, save us. If you're really the Son of God, save us and yourself. Well, that's exactly what Jesus was doing. He was saving them. And that's what one of them realized. And he was spent that day in eternity when he died. Yes, God the humble servant, saved us by enduring all and dying for us. Obedient to death, God died. That's a true statement. God died. For you can't separate true God from true man. Jesus is true God. God died on that day so that we would live. This is the good news of Jesus' unselfish <laughs> attitude that he would give it all for us to all to the glory of his Father so that we would have eternal life. And what did the Father do? Well, our text says he exalted him. After he, he was in the tomb for three days, he raised him up. And we're going to celebrate that on Easter, aren't we? For the baptism unites us not only with his death, but with his resurrection. Therefore God has also highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. And now, yes, Jesus is using his power, all his power, according to his human nature for our good, to keep us in the faith, to keep us from straying as lost sheep, to give us the gift of baptism. Yes, he's brought us into faith. He has saved us. And now Paul continues in the verses right after our text. He says, you know these words, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Truly, have fear of doing so sinful things. Fear those things which can cause harm to your salvation. And do not do them. Attitude check. And God will work his saving will in your heart and his will to do his good pleasure. Attitude check. Praise the Lord always. God has saved you by his humble servant, his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. And what does that mean for you now? Well, you too are ambassadors for Christ. You too are lights of the world. That's what Paul says in the very next verses. Do all things without complaining and disputing, 
that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Shining as lights in the world, waving your palms every day, not just in church, every day as you shine forth what Christ has done, the humble servant who served us and died that we might live. Attitude check, yes indeed, praise the Lord that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasseth all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. in it, the day that God has call, calling little Adrian to faith through baptism and washing of his sins. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Paul has written, baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. How is your child named? Adrian Xavier Conche. Receive the sign of the cross on your forehead and upon your heart that you have been redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his hosts in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. We pray that you would behold Adrian according to your boundless mercy, and bless him with true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood, all sin in him, which has been inherited from Adam, and in which he him, him, himself has committed sins, would be drowned and die. Grant that he be kept safe and secure in this holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers, and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, he would be declared worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. From ancient times, the church has observed the, the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith according to the Apostles' Creed that we confessed earlier and be, and be taught in a small catechism. 
They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor, and they are to pray for them according to, to the, with ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for their neighbor. It is, your, is it your intention then, uh, Mark and, and Brianna, to serve as sponsors to, to Adrian in the Christian faith, then answer yes with the help of God? Yes, with the help of God. God enable you to both to will and to do this faithful and loving work and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked them who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Now I ask you to answer in the stead of, of Adrian these questions. Do you renounce the devil? The answer, yes, I do renounce him. Yes, I do, renounce. do you renounce all his works? The answer, yes, I renounce them. Yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? The answer, yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? The answer, yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. The answer, yes, I believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Then answer, yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. Adrian, Xavier, Conche, do you wish to be baptized? And answer, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Okay. You may come forward. Adrian, Xavier, Conche, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. And on this special day, we, we take note of the different symbolisms that, that are present here at his baptism. The white garment that he wears, symbol of the robe of righteousness given to us through faith, that righteousness which we heard about in 2 Corinthians 5. He who became, he who knew no sin became sin that, so that we might become the righteousness of God. What a joy that is to know his sins are completely forgiven. And again, this day also, we heard about the light, the light of Jesus Christ who shines in the darkness. And this light, we now remember, shone on Easter Sunday. This is our Paschal candle, which we lit on Easter last year, in which we, we light again each time a child is baptized. For Jesus is the light of the world who shines his light into our hearts. And this, this candle represents the light of Christ shining now in Adrian's heart, which you can take and light every day, every year on this special day, April the 10th, to remind him of his baptism, what the Lord has done for him. And one other gift that we have, we talked about lambs today. And one of our members, uh, Don Herbsleb, he made, he carves these little lambs. And when a child becomes well, is baptized, he becomes a little lamb of God. And so we give this little lamb to you to remember that Jesus is his good shepherd and that he has continues to watch over him. Yeah, little Adrian's looking at the lambs, isn't he? <laughs> and we also have two of them, so we're going to put one up on the board so we can all also continue to think about Adrian and about Asher 
Asher Lee Grimes, our children have been recently baptized, and to keep them in our prayers always. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, an heir with us all of the treasures of heaven in one, the one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our brother in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim his praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. I ask the congregation now to say together, we welcome you in the name of the Lord. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Adrian the new birth in his holy baptism and made him a member of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that he has, who has now become your child, that you would keep him in his baptismal grace according to your good pleasure, that he may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name, and finally with all your saints obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Amen. And I have a baptismal certificate to give to you. Michelle, and Mark, strength to you and Brianna. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray for the church as it observes this Holy Week around the world, that all people come to see in Christ alone the Redeemer of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all nations that conflict cease and that the kingdom of God come to bless our world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. As we anticipate the celebration of Holy Week and Easter, we pray for our families and the people closest to us. Grant that we share with them our faith in Christ and live together as God's sanctified and thankful people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those with special needs and concerns this day, especially the hospitalized, the grieving, the unemployed, and all those whose special situations are on our hearts at this time and for whom our petitions are desired. We lift up to your loving care Lucinda and Gail and Carolyn and Mildred and Bob and Loretta, Jesus and Erlene, Vincent, Connie, Renee, Melly. Pray for Harriet. We pray for Dan and Suzanne. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would give them strength and healing according to your good mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. As this holiest week of the church begins, Lord, we remember before you those many faithful Christian people who have been part of our lives and our fellowship in times past, especially those who have departed this life and now are rejoicing in the glory of your promised heavenly kingdom. Direct our ways on earth that we may complete this life in faith and may at the last sing eternal hosannas together with them and all the company of heaven. Especially this day, we remember our dearly departed sister, Wanda Klima. We ask that you continue to give strength to Jim and to Bethany and all his family as they look forward to the resurrection and the reuniting with Rwanda and all the saints in heaven. We thank you for the life and faith you've given to her and for the, the joy of the crown of life that she has received through Jesus her Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through, your, through Jesus Christ, our dear Savior. Amen. Amen. Our, our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his favor upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Hosanna, loud Hosanna, the little children say. 
Through pillared court and temple, the lovely anthem rang. To Jesus, who had blessed them, close folded to his breast, the children sang their praises, the simplest and the best. From Olivet they followed, mid an exalted crowd, the victor palm branch waving and chanting clear and loud. The Lord of earth and heaven rode on in lowly state, nor scorned that little children should on his bidding wait. Hosanna in the highest, that ancient song we sing, for Christ is our Redeemer, the Lord of heaven, our King. Oh, may we ever praise Him with heart and life and voice, and in His blissful presence eternally rejoice.